Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is our post-inspire video series with the aim of equipping you for the next step. You came to inspire, you encounter Jesus, he unearthed some things in your life, and now maybe you're wondering, okay, what do I do with this? What's the next step? In the next few weeks here, we're gonna release some videos where you hear, again, personal stories and testimonies that will give you the inspiration and the motivation and the tools that you need to go further with the Lord. Thank you for tuning in. Hey Desiree, thank you for joining me today. Again, the, the purpose of these videos is really for, for anybody, but particularly young people who come to this conference, who did come to this conference, inspire and met Jesus, have been unearthed by Him, and now, okay, where do I go from here? What do I do with this passion and the vision that God's given me, and how do I walk this out? And I know you have mm -hmm. for a while now, but give us a snapshot of your story. What happened in your life? How did God bring you here? Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, when I was 11 years old, that's when I gave my heart to God. Mm. Before then, I never went in church, I didn't know anything about church. And my church was really passionate about missions, so we had participated in some of those in mm. Jamaica. When you were 11? When I was 11 or 12, you know, years old, yeah. even into high school. But when I was 13, I got a chance to come here to the YWAM base in Tyler, mm. and I did a, a short-term student like summer mission. Mm -hmm. It's like a mini discipleship training school wow. where you know get to learn about hearing God's voice and uh, get God's heart for missions. Mm -hmm. And God spoke to me during a quiet time when I was 13 years old and he said, I want you to be a minister of my compassion in the nations. Wow. And that I was going to come here to this base when I was old enough and do a discipleship training school and uh, go into missions full time. As a 13 year old, that was great. And I said, yeah, God, I'm going to do that. Right. So I kept doing missions work and I was getting ready to graduate high school, you know, and instead of kind of moving full speed ahead with coming to do my DTS, I grabbed hold of something else like, you know, and I held on to that thing for, wow, all of my college, mm -hmm. all throughout my 20s. Wow. And I just kind of heaped on a lot of like fear and shame and regret, you know, because the thing that I was holding on to, it just wasn't, it wasn't satisfying me. It wasn't bringing me fulfillment. And even though I was serving God, it really wasn't bringing me any kind of, any kind of joy. My purpose. My purpose wasn't being fulfilled wow. the way God wanted it to be. It wasn't in its fullness. Yeah. And when I finally was able to let go of that thing I was holding on to for so long, God said, and you know, I still called you to be a minister of my compassion to the nations. Come on. So hold on a second. You were 13. Let's just pause there for a moment. <laughs> the creator of heaven and earth spoke to you when you were 13 with, the, with, with passion in his heart that he had for your life. I mean, come on. I don't know how old you are watching this, but it doesn't matter. She was 13 when God reve <laughs> revealed the purposes of his heart for, for her life to her. That's amazing. Let's just take that in. This is so good. Thank you, Lord, for pursuing yeah. us <laughs> in any situation, any age. You know, I have three young kids, and I'm excited to hear stories like this. I, I want my kids to hear the Lord's voice now. Mm -hmm. He's my son is seven now. It's like, okay, Lord, speak to him, and he does. Yeah. So, and then you said, okay, 13. He spoke to you. He gave you purpose. He gave you prophetic vision for your future, and then you kind of drifted away, and stuff yeah. happened, and you you ho you held on to other things in your life, mm -hmm. and then things like you mentioned shame and guilt and all that. Uh, but then something happened. Can you zoom in on that just oh, a little yeah. bit more? Like how did when when did it pick up? Again? Well, you see. That thing that I was holding on to, it was kind of breaking me down. Mm -hmm. You noticed that. And I began to kind of just close myself off into this bubble where externally I tried to make everything seem like it was fine wow. in my life, mm -hmm. you know. But inside I was just crying out. Did you still go to church during that time? I did. I was fully active in yeah. ministry at my church, serving wow. the Lord, enjoying just, you know, God's presence in my life. But I knew I wasn't living in his fullness and it was choking me. Yeah. So yeah. Pulled you apart, sort of. It did, yeah. you know, and finally, you know, the people say the straw that broke the camel's back. This, you know, thing, this whole thing just blew up in my face and I found myself just alone. Mm -hmm. Nothing to show for, with everything I clinged on to just kind of like blew up. And it wasn't there anymore. Can I ask you how old you were at that moment? I was 29. So 13, 29, there was a, a journey between there. Oh, it was a lot of <laughs> life lived. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so I, I think I just kind of, I heard of this group, a YWAM group that was coming mm -hmm. to a church that was near me 
and their outreach teams were doing a arts presentation. And that's what I love, the arts. I've been that's a right. dancer and a singer, uh, playing instruments since I was a young teenager. Wow. And I connect and I minister you know, through the arts. Mm -hmm. Very gifted. So, thank yeah, you. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, and so they came and they did this artistic presentation of a story of a missionary's life mm -hmm. and death. And they were from this base and they were able to pray with me. Wow. And it was that night that I went online and I filled out my DTS application and said- I had no idea. It was a year before my school would even start. Yeah. And I said, I gotta get this in. So I put in my discipleship training school application, yeah. was accepted, you know, and started just, you know, preparing myself to come in, in the fall of 2017. That's when I came and did my discipleship training school right away did my school of evangelism. Mm -hmm. And then a month after that, came back to join staff full-time here in the arts department. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second. I didn't know this part of your story. It was that the, uh, the, the mess, the, it was the uh, story of that martyr who came from this base, mm -hmm. right? The one we did at Inspire a few years ago, we took that on the road mm -hmm. and they came to your church. That's amazing. They came to a church in, in the city next to mine and, and they weren't even supposed to go there. They were yeah. supposed to be in Pennsylvania, but that something fell through and so they came to the church that was in wow. my area. And this was the moment where God said, hey, I remember what I said to you when you were 13. I haven't yeah. forgotten. Because I was like, I could have been a part of that. <laughs> right. Had I come, yeah. had I been there, wow. you know, I could have touched someone else's life like that presentation touched my life and God was like because this is what I want you to do with the talents and the gifts that I gave you yeah. you know so your your whole vision for for all these years you said guilt shame and all this and what those things do that inward focused mm -hmm. kind of sort of put you in the victim place but when you had that you just said something we need you to catch catch, uh, catch this she said I could have been a part of this presentation touching someone else's life yes you began to think about how to serve God and serve people. That's awesome. And that kind of thing breaks, I feel like, that kind of attitude breaks things like complacency mm -hmm. in our lives and even with pride. Like when we talk, as an artist, I'm an artist myself, play music and stuff, and, and I know that things like pride creeps in mm -hmm. easily. And so yes. the Bible has such strong language against this. I just think of James 4 where he says that God resists the proud. Now, as someone, you guys came to inspire, you've met Jesus, you've been unearthed. As someone who wants to walk their life unearthed before Jesus and before man, the last thing we want to do is for God to resist us. Real quick, yes. Desiree, how do you deal with this stuff in your own life? Pride and all that wow. complacency, how do you push Well, that with complacency, I know that there's like a fine line between like being faithful in what God's asked you to do mm. and being complacent and being okay with things never changing and staying the same, even stagnation. Wow. You know, I don't, I never want to get to a place where I feel like I can't keep growing. Mm -hmm. I can't receive from somebody in a way that's going to help me to become better mm -hmm. in ministry or as a person and build my character. So I keep myself open mm -hmm. to criticism, to growth, learning new things. You got to steward the crafts that God gave you. So if you're good at something and it's a gift, you know, you're passionate about it. I want to be able to keep growing. Mm -hmm. So I just keep making sure I know I'm never there. I'm never fully there. I can always keep growing deeper in God and building my craft. Wow. And also when it comes to pride, the biggest thing that I do is number one, learn to accept, you know, when someone says, oh, that was really good. That really touched me. I'm thankful mm -hmm. and I thank God that I'm able to do that and be that part in that person's life. Mm -hmm. But then I champion the giftings of other people. Mm -hmm. So I never make it seem like I'm the only person that can do that thing. Wow. In fact, I want to call out the gifts in others and say, and I see this in you and you're afraid to do this, <laughs> but God wants to use this gift that you have yeah. so that way you can affect other people's lives, disciple them and, you know, point to him. Mm -hmm. So you can't be prideful if you're constantly promoting other people and their giftings and lifting them up. Come on. So it puts you in a place of knowing that you're not the only one, but yes, God has given you this gift. Yeah. So you use it to to multiply. Yeah, multiply and promote others. Yeah. That's amazing. It's been rich, Desiree. Thank you so Thanks. much. <laughs> Guys, here's another few nuggets you can hold on to in, in your journey, uh, unearthed before Jesus. Bless you guys.